All right, guys, so here we are, the Jazz Miner X4Q. Let's open it up. All right, top of the box is open. I see a handle and a power cable. Let's get this thing out of this box. So I do want to thank Jingle Mining for sending this miner out for me to showcase for you guys. And if you are in the market for a Jazz Miner X4Q or any Jazz Miner for that matter, be sure to check out Jingle Mining. Please note the payment methods here where please note that the payment only allows payments via Coinbase. If your preferred payment method is crypto or wire transfers, please get in contact with the team via email or online chat so we can assist you further with the order placement. So you are going to have to come to their website if you're not using Coinbase and use the live chat to get a hold of them or send them out an email to purchase your miners. Okay guys, so it is out of the box and here we go. We can see much bigger fans on this one. I believe these are 120 millimeter where the other ones were small little screamers. We got our ethernet plug in the back, our TF card, power, uh, power supply fan. We also came with the wrong cable for North America, but that's okay. We got plenty of this. All you need is a C13 to a NEMA plug and you're good to go. These come with like monitors, all power supply. So we should all have plenty of these. It also has some extra handles. Well, not extra handles, handles that still have to be mounted on. We only have the one at the top currently. So you can put these on. I probably won't, but we'll see what happens. And a nice instruction manual, which is all in Chinese. So I can't really read this. On the front, we have a reset button. We see our normal and fault lights, IP report, and the ASIC chip. So it doesn't look like it has any fans here on the front side. If this is legitly the front side, we'll see what happens once the fans start moving. But it looks like it's only the ones in the back side and it must just blow through. So that's quite interesting. Now this does say input 200 to 240 volts. I don't see anything that says 120 volts. So this may not work on 120 volts. Uh, that's interesting as well. I have this set up to plug straight into my wall here, but I don't think it's going to work according to this. So that's interesting. It only uses 480 watts. So you would think you could use your standard voltage here, but you may need at least 200 volts judging by this tag here. So I do have the Ethernet cable plugged in. I do have the power plugged in to my standard 120 volt here. So we're gonna see if this actually works. Time to hit the on button. And it's not, oh, it's starting to turn. It's just so quiet. I didn't realize anything was happening. Wow, you cannot hear this thing at all. But again, we won't know anything till it actually ramps up, but it does feel like it is blowing out the backside. So it's actually sucking in through the front and bringing the air out the back here. Okay, so I logged in here. It looks like there's no pools or anything in by default. We can see two different control boards here, both at 200 of a frequency. Now there's nothing in the log saying anything to do with a fault, wrong URL. So maybe it's just a pool issue. So we're gonna continue on and see what's going on. Now, uh, Ethereum is set to let go, move to the merge sometime tonight. So I'm still gonna mine Ethereum on this thing if I can. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put jazz beast q so we can see the q here password zero password and hopefully okay wait we need our ethereum here yes and we want to crank this up to 225 update and see if this thing will even begin mining ethereum in the first place because i do believe the dag is like five gigabytes so we're well over that but we'll see what happens now, just for clarification, I did go to the Jingle Mining website just to see if I can find any numbers. And it does say a voltage of 100 to 240 volts. So we're going to continue on with the 100 volts and see, you know, what goes on. I'm at 120 volt on my home network here in North America. Okay, so it does look like we are connected. Our stratum is all set up. We're get, getting our get work thing. Now it's probably gonna take 30 minutes or so to get going. So I'll keep an eye on that. All the boards are being found and the fault light turned off. We are now have a green blinking light. So it most likely was the fact that there was no pool set up within the dashboard. Okay, so it's been 37 minutes and 11 seconds. We got one accepted share and 2,908 mega hash, which is 2.9 giga hash. Obviously that's wrong. 
must have just engaged and then found a share so it thinks it's going super fast. Now default specs is about 1.04 giga hash or 1040 mega hash. We are over that five gigabyte limit. So I'm guessing we will be around the 700 mega hash range on Ethereum. We're not gonna be able to get a full 24 hour test here because due to the merge, we're not gonna even get enough time to mine Ethereum. So we will be putting this to Ethereum Classic once the merge does go through. And I'll be showing you how to set that up later on once we get to that point. All right, so I did not hit any blocks and the merge happened. So I'm just gonna throw this thing onto ETC, let it run and see what happens here. So this is your URL. You're gonna wanna slam your ETC URL. I'm using Flexpool here. Inside the worker name here, you're simply gonna paste in your ETC address, followed by a period, and then whatever you want to name this worker. I put Jazz Beast Q for the Jazz Miner Q version, and you do not need a password. So once you're done with that, simply hit the update button and you're good to go. All right, guys, Jazz Beast, the Jazz Miner X4Q. I don't have a full 24 hours yet. I turned it off right after the merge went live and on the ETC, but we are about 16 hours in or something. So we do have a six and a 12 hour average and we are pulling about 1.13 giga hash. So that's uh, you know some nice hash rates for a single miner. Now let's see how loud this thing is and how much power does it draw. Okay guys, so as for the power consumption, we're around 503 watts, 503.9 to 504. I do see it at 502 sometimes. Now this is on uh, a previous version firmware and this one actually on the X41U did use a bit more power. So sometime later on, I will be updating the firmware in this jazz miner and hopefully it will reduce the power just a little bit. But there is our power so far, about 103 watts. Let's see how loud this thing is because it is, it's quiet guys. I really can't hear this thing at all. There's a slight hum coming out of it, but overall zero noise whatsoever. All right, so here I am with the decibel reader. Here's me talking away my voice and we're about 73 to 76 decibels. I'm gonna shut up for a little while and see what this thing picks up. So about 53 decibels. Let's go to the back. This is where the fan actually is here. So I'm just gonna put it to the side and I'll shut up one more time. So pretty much the same thing right by the fan. So this thing is extremely quiet when it does come to the decibel range. Let's just put this up against the Jazz Miner X41U. Okay, so we can clearly see this thing is much, much quieter and it does the job. It says the Jazz Miner X4Q, Q for quiet. This thing is absolutely quiet. All right, guys, so let's take a look at profitability. We know things have been very, very bad for everything. GPUs, I'm guessing, same thing with this ASIC, but we have 1.1 1 .1 giga hash, 1,130 mega hash here at 503 watts. I do have the average for the last one hour because we don't have a full 24 hour average yet. And we'll get the improper numbers and it'll look more profitable than it actually is. So let's calculate and see what this actually looks like. So not the greatest, but we are at least profitable. So we got Quirk Chain currently hanging out at $3.86 before power and $2.66 after. We got Ubic here at 345 and 224. Now I cannot confirm, I have not tried this. I don't think it's gonna work on this. So you might have to cancel that out. Remember, ETH hash and ETC hash only. So this one is not a valid option. We do have Ethereum Classic here at $2.58 at $1.38 after power. Now this is at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Actually, personally, myself, in USD, I am at about 11 cents, but I think the average going rate is probably around 15 cents throughout most people in the United States and stuff. Again, I could be wrong, but let's take a look at actually 15 cents here, get some more accurate numbers. So let's look at it all over again. Quirk Chain is still 205 after power. 
Oh my gosh, ETC is only 77 cents after power. That is not good. And we're in the negative. So yeah, that's not looking good. Even for a miner, uh, efficient as this thing is, it's not looking good. But remember, hash rate will begin coming off these coins. We're moving more into a bear market. Prices are coming down. Hash rate's pretty much at all times high across the board on everything. So, you know, it's going to take a few months for things to settle out. But current profitability is not looking good, even for this monster of a miner. It just sucks that it came out now with the merge has gone through because the profitability is not looking good. But remember, guys, hang in there. We'll see what happens. Hash rate will start dumping off the networks eventually. And when it does, hopefully profitability will come up. And when it does, these will be the miners on Ethereum Classic, at least, that will be getting the profitability first. Now keep in mind the profitability does matter on the efficiency of your equipment as well as your power price. And obviously I have better power than some people and other people have better power costs than I do. So for me, this thing is probably barely breaking even. I believe it is still in the green a little bit, but then it might not be for you or someone else and other people might be seeing pretty good profits on this thing where I wouldn't be. So, you know, it all depends on how much you pay for power and all those other regards. But thank you for watching this video, guys. I will see you on the next one. Rabbit out.